Kevin Mitnick, the world's most famous hacker. You, sir, were once considered the world's most famous hacker. You're the most wanted man in computer crime, correct? Yes. Back in the 1990s, I was the world's most wanted hacker. So I was being chased by the FBI, the US Marshal Service. I became involved in hacking for the intellectual curiosity. I was getting into these cell phone companies to look at the source code of the firmware of the chips that are in these cell phones. You know, I was arrested in 1995, I was released in 2000, so that was five years without using a computer. Uh, I'm here today, proud and honored to be here, actually, uh, with my friend, Kevin Mitnick. Kevin calls yourself, you call yourself uh, an ethical hacker, is that Not right? Not an what? ethical hacker, a certified ethical hacker. What is that? Well, I passed this test years ago. It's basically a test to see your skill set right. at uh, security and networking and this sort of thing. And so when you pass this test, you get this thing called a CEH. Right. So I joke when people ask me because of my unique background, they go, well, are you ethical these days? And I go, well, I'm certified ethical, <laughs> right? So it's kind of a joke, but... Uh, well, knowing you, it's not a bad question to ask, right? <laughs> I mean, you've got a little bit of a history. It was never about money. It was never to cause damage. It was never to write malware. It was all about the intellectual curiosity. I had this great passion for wanting to know the trick, mm. to the you know the secret to the trick, sure. and um, pursuit of knowledge. Mm. I was in solitary confinement for mm. almost a year because a prosecutor told a judge that I could whistle into the phone after calling a modem at NORAD and launch a nuclear weapon. Hmm. And I was held in sol. I mean, this was the time I lived in, so I I was I kept myself mum. And uh, so when I did this uh, congressional testimony, people say, hey, this guy actually know what he's talking about. Um, and that's when I kind of almost, you know, during that time launched my speaking career. Some of our attendees in there who just got hacked by Kevin Mitnick, the world's most famous hacker. Kevin Mitnick's keynote was uh, fantastic, a little scary. Um, a lot of exploits that are out there that uh, you may not be aware of. I was impressed. Um, I'm still really concerned about the bad USB exploits. Here we have what looks like an ordinary lightning cable, but you know what? This is actually a malicious cable that could inject keystrokes onto your computer, download malware, and infect it. So, how would a bad guy get this cable into your organization? Well, they could do it physically. How many people have cables that are plugged in, around their desk, in their drawers. What about an attacker that would buy a company employee a Pixel 3 phone that's coming out next week and actually shrimp wrap the cable inside the box? And this sort of thing. There are many different ways a bad guy can get the cable inside the organization. So what happens when you plug in a malicious cable into your computer? Well, let me show you what happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this cable, we're going to plug it into this Windows 10 laptop. And this Windows 10 laptop has the latest re uh, release of McAfee antivirus. Its security patches have just been applied today. So this is typically what you would see in an organization. Over here, we have the attacker computer. You see this big white screen? When this computer becomes infected, we're going to see a connection from the malware over here. Now, does this cable actually work? Of course. If we take my iPhone and we plug it in, it actually charges the iPhone. Over here on the Windows 10 laptop, we see that iPhone has popped up. So let me show you how this works. What we have here is we have the Bluetooth transmitter that's going to command the cable to inject keystrokes to download malware for Windows 10. So here we go. and look at the lower left-hand corner of the screen. Those are the keystrokes that are being injected. And now the machine's infected with malware. And on the left-hand side here, we'll see the Trojan pop up in one second. There it is. So now, with this remote access Trojan, the attacker has full control of the victim's laptop. So what have we learned? We've learned that sophisticated attackers come up with new methods to hack their targets. So how do you prevent this attack from being successful against you or your organization? Simple, you need to stop, look and think 
before you plug it We in. wound up in a situation where we're incredibly vulnerable. And maybe if we had listened hard enough to people like Mitnick, we would have built these systems a little stronger. And, you know, it's funny because when you think about information security, you think about technology, right? Immediately, it's a connection. But you not only have to think about technology, you have to think about the people that use the technology because it's usually easier to hack a human than it is to hack technology. And that's why a lot of companies actually hire Kevin Minnick right now to protect their jewels. My case has brought a lot of awareness to companies, security awareness. Hey, there's threats out there. You need to do something about it. And what I get to do today is companies use me to test their security, teach them how to remediate those problems so a real bad guy cannot exploit them. So I still get to play the game, but it's with authorization and I earned a living from it. So how cool is that?